So here I've got a Kodak Retina 1. This is the type uh, 118, the second of the Retina models. And it's distinguishable from the 117. The 117 has an extra knob here, which is the knob that you turn to free up the film advance to allow you to wind on to the next shot. This camera has a little knob on the back there instead. So that you would advance your film until the sprocket locks. See if this is going to do it for me. Like that. Cock and fire your shutter. And you press this little lever across, which moves the frame counter and frees up the film advance to allow you to wind on to the next shot. So this one's here for service, so I've got to get the top off. Well getting the top off this model is a little bit more complicated than a lot of cameras. First we've got to remove the rewind knob. That's done in the common way with retinas. Put something through the fork and then just rotate that. Unscrew that with your fingers. Pop that to one side. Now we've got the advanced knob. This is screwed to the shaft, but first of all we've got to lift off this piece here, this advanced and retail, uh, rewind lever. This is held on with a tiny screw there. Is there one on the opposite side? Yes, there is. So first of all we've got to remove those screws. One, two, and that frees up the little plate that holds this lever down in position. Yeah, which direction have I got to move this? That way I think. So I've brought that right round to the stop, moving it in the advanced position. I'm going to lift that lever slightly, if I can get under it, lift it over the post, rotate it further, counterclockwise, and that allows me to lift that off. Complete with its uh, little retainer plate, which was held down with the two screws. There's the little retainer plate here. So that's removed our advanced rewind lever. I've still got to get the advanced knob off, and the advanced knob is left hand threaded. And I've got to hold the shaft from inside the back of the camera from rotating, so I've got a spanner to do that for me if it'll engage the shaft well enough. I'm not sure that they sized these particularly well when they were notching them. Uh, sometimes the spanner fits, sometimes it does not. See if I can get this on here. That's it. And I've rotated that anti-clock, no, clockwise in this position. And that's unscrewed. So there I've managed to get my film advance knob off and the rewind knob off, both without much of a fight. Which, to me, suggests that the camera has been serviced in probably recent historical times, sometime in the last three or four decades. It's much more common for things to be frozen on and not ever wanting to come off. So I'll remove these screws. These are all just nickel plated screws and the top cover should lift off. It does. And there's my film advance mechanism such as it is. There's not an awful lot to it. This is all very clean. Um, you can see there's a little bit of dust in here but nothing to speak of. This should be an easy job. 
<laughs> I've seen that a few times. Okay. Right. So that little washer there has got a raised lip in the centre. That goes on the top. Here we've got one gear or um, ratchet pull. And you can see the teeth are swept back. Oh, I see that the lever that engages with this here, the tip on it is somewhat mutilated. That's why it uh, didn't want to engage correctly. When I was winding on. Yes, that wants to skip out. That tooth's mutilated. It means that someone has probably forced the advance knob, which rotates that whole shaft, instead of it stopping. When the pull dropped in and locked that pulley, locked that uh, wheel, they haven't stopped, they've applied extra force. Oh well, it's no accounting for what um, silly people might do. Alright, that this, so there's a fault there, I want to change the shape of the tip on that arm. I'll see if I can straighten up the bent tip on it, but failing that, uh, failing that I'll have to file it off completely I think and reshape it, so, however we'll see how we get on. Right, I'll take this screw off here take great care that you don't uh, you make a note of where all these pieces fit and their orders which way up they go I see there's a washer in there this piece should have a gear on the underside It does. All these parts are very clean. To remove this lever here, well it's got a return spring at this point, which I can possibly unhook. That's good. We have a return spring on the end of the counter at this end, which I should be able to unhook from here once I get this off. So we've got a single screw here. That should lift off, it does. I can swing this round and unhook it from its spring. That spring is probably loose on the post anyway. I'll put that to one side so I don't lose it. This arm should now lift off. There's no spacer or anything under there. We've got this spring here doing its best to get lost or damaged. I'll leave it in place for the moment. Here, I want to get this ratchet wheel off because I want to remove the shaft from underneath. So I'll See if I can leave that up with a couple of screwdrivers. Gotta be careful not to leave her on the edge of this body because of the black paint will just chip straight off. That's it, that lifted very easily. See, there's our ratchet wheel. We've got a plain disc underneath it, three screws here hold the advance shaft mechanism in place and the screws are tight screws on old cameras tend to fall into one or two camps they're too loose or they're too tight they're always a problem then care not to damage that spring I can lift out the advance shaft there's its return spring that's for the little dog here which changes the advance from um, advance to to uh, rewind when you swing the lever across 
it lifts this little dog up out of the way of the take up spool which I can probably wriggle out of the back of the camera that's got a very steep rise in there on that slope and that dog drops in and drives it and that's what allows us to pull the foot film forward and when the rewind lever is in the correct position it lifts this dog completely out of that drive dog position and allows this to be pulled backwards for rewinding your film. So this piece, see if we can get this out. Okay, yeah, as usual, this has a spring in it that stops you from being able to back this up. So the whole knob should not rotate backwards at any stage, only the shaft inside. And the end of the spring here has been broken off. The end of the spring engages with a slot in the housing here and that's just clogged up with filth so it's probably been broken for a long long time so how does that end of that spring get broken well, that spring's job is to stop the film advance knob from being rotated in the wrong direction at any stage If somebody gets to the end of their film and decides they want to rewind the film and doesn't bother flipping the rewind lever over and just starts cranking on it, that potentially could break the end of that spring. And the alternative is if somebody wants to advance the film but they haven't taken note of the direction of the arrow on the, re on the advance knob and twisted in the opposite direction, that would certainly break that spring. But one way or the other, that spring's broken, and the answer is always the same. It's got to come off, and I've got to turn, create a new 90 degree tip on the end of that spring, so that it'll lodge into the groove in the uh, bush here. Just seeing if the end of the spring was present, it doesn't appear to be, it looks like it's gone. All this is just filth and metal filings from this spring having rotated on the shaft here. It looks like the end of the spring here is actually bent over rather than snapped off. Oh, well, I'll deal with that when I come to it. Anything else of note here? Pop this to one side. Where's our frame counter? Now that is very stiff. Unusually so. It should move a lot freer than that. I've got to get a tool engaged with this very wide slot at the top here and unscrew that. And I'm not sure whether my screwdriver is wide enough to span that. It's not. So I will have to find something that will do that job. I think I do have a screwdriver made to do that task. I wonder if my rule will do it. Oh, my rule might do it. Yeah, it does. Okay, job done. I just used the edge of my uh, six inch rule there in the slot in that screw. Alright, so what have we got here? We've just got a spring, a tension spring underneath. Here we've got the counter disc and its gear all attached. It's all one piece. And you can see the little ratchet teeth there. And that gets pushed forward one position each time by this lever. As you move the, the lever, it just shifts this one position each time. So that's easy. There's not really much left at the top of the camera here now. I'll just remove the film rewind bush so I can clean the shaft and the bush. If it'll lift there, it will. This uh, little spring clip part here is a little bit distorted. That's exceptionally normal. 
um, it just means that somebody's been pulling and twisting on it a bit and this part, these parts just need to be cleaned to get rid of all that old sticky dried out grease get them all nice and sparkling clean again and then fresh grease for reassembly so that's pretty much the top of the camera dismantled I've got no special reason to remove this the sprocket shaft here is turning freely and there's no special reason I need to deal with that um, to lubricate that I would need to remove it from the camera which I could do easily enough there's a single screw here on this little gear undo that screw I could lift that shaft out completely in the back of the camera so I'm seeing a great gob of something nasty here I don't know what that used to be yeah very unpleasant looking stuff and there's just dirt here, verdigris and dried out grease and so forth which needs to be dealt with the back cap here is a bit reluctant to drop over but I think a little touch of graphite grease or something on there will sort that out and of course got the struts and the bellows to deal with but one thing at a time I'm just going to clean up these components from the film advance mechanism here at the top of the camera um, just because I want to get that to advance working correctly and I'm interested in the state of this little pawl on the arm here that was damaged and to see if I can straighten that up or failing that file a new tip on that but uh, so I'll clean this I'm doing nothing exciting here so you don't need to watch I'm just going to clean this lot using naphtha and a cotton, bu cotton buds to get all the components clean and then I'll deal with that I can deal with the top of this camera pretty much independent from the rest of the work because there's very little uh, connection between the lens and shutter assembly and the top of the camera the, there's no double exposure prevention mechanism here um, all of this is the shutter is cocked at the front and it's released at the front either with the plunger or with the lever so I can deal with this film advance mechanism separately so I'll do that and I'll clean all these components and then reassemble it you can watch that part as I'm cleaning up the camera body I thought well I'll just put a touch of lubricant on this back catch and get it to work better and when I looked at the little tab here on the body that the back catch clips over I noticed that it was skew -off. it was at an odd angle and I've never seen that before so having a look at it I see that that post is riveted in and the rivet head if you like at this point is partly missing and judging by the paint it was always missing so this would be a uh, manufacturing defect you could say so what I'm going to do is straighten up that little tab check that it's tapped back squarely I'm going to put some epoxy adhesive on here and hopefully seal that piece correctly in position and stop it from rotating or coming any looser well the first task I've got with this film advance is to reform the bent tip of this spring it may be that that's snapped off it may be that it's just bent back in so I've got to bend that little tab out so it sticks out at 90 degrees so let's hope see if it'll play nicely for me it may just snap off no that was just slipping out of the pliers well that looks good of course it probably sticks out too far let's have a look I think that might be okay if it sticks out too far it's just hard to get this back down into the body cavity I'll put it in place 
And then if it's a problem, I'll address that. I'll just take the end off it with the Dremel. All right. So basically, the way this works is that this is tightly wound around the shaft at this point, and it's held in the housing at that point. So if you turn this in one direction, it's releasing the spring effectively, and this will rotate. And if you turn it in the other direction, it grabs the spring and pulls it tight, so it does not want to rotate. And basically what's been happening is that um, tip's been missing, so that it uh, no longer works. I want that down at the bottom, it's got to be down that way. Right, so I need to put some uh, grease on there first, and I'm thinking what's best. Messy though it might be, I think the graphite grease will work better there. So it does need to be able to turn freely in one direction. So I'll put a bit of this on here, and I'll get my fingers nicely covered in filthy black grease and get this spring in position. Of course it's always a bugger getting something like this down in position. So I'm running round the coils with the tip of a screwdriver pushing it gently over into place. Well, it's nearly, nearly all on there. That's it. That spring down. Yeah. So if I hold that tip against my finger, I can rotate the shaft in this direction, but in the other direction it would just lock solid. So that's all that's required there, and I'm going to put a little bit of uh, graphite grease since I've got it in my hand into the bush. and put this in place. See if I can get that spring, the tip of that spring seated in the groove there. Doesn't really want to go. Uh, what's going on there? Is it not square enough? Yeah, it might not be out square enough tip of that spring. Let's see if I can bend it out a bit more. So I ever do this it'll just snap off. It still doesn't want to feed in. Let's have a look at that gap. See if that gap there is not clogged with anything. Doesn't appear to be. I'll just tap that in place, I think. See how we get on. Let's support that in there. That's in position. Yeah, will it turn? Let's find out. It's turning in the direction of the arrow. 
that rotates smoothly, turning in the opposite direction. No, it doesn't want to. No, all that happens is the, advanced, the knob turned off there. So that's good. So that's certainly working well. That's exactly as it should work. It turns in one direction, doesn't want to turn in the other direction. That's what, what would, that was certainly not happening to start off with. So that part's good. Is it smooth? It's not as smooth as I'd like. Just feeling that, just trying to feel what's what's happening. No, I think that's okay, I think that'll wear in nicely. Right, can I put that back in the body? I expect so. Let's zoom you out a bit. Uh, the contrast's up, the sun's coming in the window, I'll just pull this curtain across. That's better. So a little bit of uh, synthetic grease here, which I'll put on that post. and on that spring where it bears against the take-up spool. And the take-up spool in this case is metal. I know later cameras had uh, Bakelite take-up spools. This is, this is metal. Let's get this in place. Why does it not want to be? feed down? That's better. So here we've sort of got the upper part of the advanced mechanism, if you like. Now the piece that actually drives the take-up spool is this little dog here. And that little dog is sprung loaded to drop it into position and that lever our advanced rewind lever pulls this back up out of the way it's a little bit tight I think I've probably folded this in a slightly when I was busy tapping things I'll better straighten that out so the spring goes in and our little drive dog goes in and these that drive dog's held in position with that advanced rewind lever at the top and as you can see when the advanced rewind lever is turned in one direction it pulls the dog back up out of the way and as it goes in the other way it leaves, lets the dog down which allows it to engage with the top of the film take-up shaft spool. So that can go into the body. Let's get that lined up and lined up with the top of the take-up spool. Make sure I've got that little spring not trapped under there. I'll pop one screw in to hold that in place. Yes, that rotates. Take that out now. Hmm. 
Okay, so far so good. Let's just wind that on. Oh, that won't wind on at the moment. That's not going to go. Let's get that plate on there. Our little pull for the ratchet. The plate that went on the top. The advance knob. I'm just checking the feel of that to see that that feels smooth and it does. If I tighten that up, we'll see if it wants to move in the opposite direction. Well, of course, I can't get the spanner to stay tight on this because the flats are not ground particularly well. That's it, so something like that. So it would go in one direction, does not want to rotate the other way. That's good. If this was wound right down tight, we should be able to revolve the pull that dog right up out of the way and allow the rewind the shaft to the spool to turn the opposite direction. Well that's not far enough. We want more than that. Get under here and lift that. Not quite. Oh, let's do it this way. Well, that drive dog's not lifting out all the way. So I've obviously not got my timing of that quite correct there. 